It's no surprise that disasters, both natural, like earthquakes or wildfires, and man-caused, like the bombings at the Boston Marathon, are more frequent and more intense. What does not change, and never will, is our need to know how our loved ones are when disasters occur. Having an out-of-area contact plan allows you to do two things. First, it allows you to find out pretty quickly how your loved ones are. And second, it helps you determine where they are and when you will be together again. Creating your out-of-area contact plan is a simple but vitally important activity. First, gather your loved ones together, perhaps for a few minutes after dinner, to discuss the plan. Second, choose a family member or friend who will be the contact for your loved ones. This is the person everyone calls following a disaster to report their status and learn about others. Your contact should live at least 100 miles away from you. This is far enough away to be outside the area impacted by disaster. Third, write your contact's name, phone number, and email address on a small card for each of your loved ones. Fourth, keep this card in a purse, wallet, or backpack. Fifth, review your contact's information at least twice a year to make sure the information is current. A good time to do this is when we change our clocks for daylight savings time. For loved ones who have a cell phone, texting and social media are other ways to communicate with each other. We're sorry, all circuits are busy now. Cell phone we services quickly become overwhelmed in the immediate area of the disaster's impact by the large number of people trying to call at the same time. However, text messages require less bandwidth, so those messages usually get through. Following Hurricane Sandy in October 2012, FEMA tweeted, let loved ones know you're okay by sending a text or updating your social networks. Take five minutes today to create your out-of-area contact plan.